And it seems that they have achieved that. The popularity of Hamas has only increased as a consequence of the fact that they've launched this attack on Israel. They stood up to Israel. Yes, they got clobbered, but they didn't get defeated. They're still standing. There's a ceasefire. Second, they launched this in order to gain sympathy from the world, to show Israel that the world is on the Palestinian side. And we saw that. We saw massive pro-Palestinian demonstrations all over Europe, in some places in the United States. We saw uh, the European, the, the, what do you call it, Just Court of Justice, International Court of Justice, start proceedings against Israel, not against Hamas. So European leaders ultimately, ultimately side with Hamas, not with Israel. So they got what they wanted. Now, what did Netanyahu want? Well, what Netanyahu wanted was to stop the opposition from establishing a government, to present himself as the only credible prime minister of Israel's future. And Netanyahu got what he wanted. The opposition's attempt to create a, a government that does not include Netanyahu failed because of the war. Uh, originally, the, there, were, there were negotiations to bring in all the parties that opposed Netanyahu, including an Islamist party within Israel, to form a coalition and to form a government basically opposed to Netanyahu and some right-wing parties agreed to participate in such a coalition in order to bring some stability to Israel in order to get rid of Netanyahu as prime minister. What happened in Gaza, what happened in Jerusalem, what happened in the riots around Israel made that impossible for the right-wing parties to participate in such a coalition. They have withdrawn and now it appears the people who said they would never form a government with Netanyahu ever again, they'd had it, they finished, they didn't want to have anything to do with him, and now are back into participating in that coalition, and it looks like Netanyahu will be the next prime minister of Israel for the gazillionth time, uh, by far the longest serving prime minister in Israeli history, uh, if he gets this next term. So, uh, it looks like everybody got what they wanted politically of the major players. No solution, no peace, no long-term prospects, but a short-term, short-term, Uh, short-term uh, resolution of certain political problems that both Hamas and Netanyahu had. So it served their purposes. People died. Uh, lives were, you know, disrupted. Uh, business was disrupted. But you know what? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Oh, there is. What is that white thing? Somebody says there's a white dot in the corner there. Huh. It's a reflection, it's a reflection off of somewhere in something. Oh, there it is. It's a reflection in, in, the, in the plastic, in the plastic over there. No, wait. It's a rocking me. People, people stop watching the show because uh, I rock too much. You guys are still here. All right, let's see. Any questions? Um, any questions about this topic. So we've got one. Uh, if you were running Israel, would you have an army invade and destroy Hamas, Hezbollah, and the insurgents and conquer Palestine one for all? Uh, yes. Yes. I would uh, put ground troops in Gaza. I would destroy 
Hamas. I would destroy Islamic Jihad. Uh, I would uh, bring them. I would go into the West Bank. I would reoccupy the entire West Bank. I would uh, take every terrorist cell I could take and put them in jail or, 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 or kill them um, fighting. Uh, and, um, I, and yes, I, you know, I don't know that I would do Hezbollah at the same time. But you'd have to take care of Hezbollah as well, and that would that would involve an invasion into Lebanon with massive force and a complete complete destruction of Hamas. Uh, it would mean it would mean uh, bombing their bases all over Lebanon, including in Beirut. It would mean completely uh, annihilating their military capabilities, as Israel did to the PLO in 1982. And then leaving Lebanon, right? Doing that and then leaving. So that's what I would do. I think it is the only way. Um, it is the only way to uh, actually achieve peace in the long run. It's to defeat the enemy. I am to begin with. I wonder if I can ask you to capsulize. I know this is difficult. Can I ask you to capsulize your philosophy? What uh, is Randism? I, first of all, I do not call it Randism, and I don't like that name. All I right. call it Objectivism. All right. Meaning a philosophy based on objective reality. Now, let me explain it as briefly as I can. First, my philosophy is based on the concept that reality exists as an objective absolute. That man's mind, reason, is his means of perceiving it and that man needs a rational morality. I am primarily the creator of a new code of morality which has so far been believed impossible, namely, a morality not based on faith. On or faith. Not on faith, not on arbitrary whim, not on emotion, not on arbitrary edict, mystical or social, but on reason, a morality which can be proved by means of logic which can be demonstrated to be true and necessary. All right, all right. Now, may I define what my morality is? All right. Because this is merely an introduction. My morality is based on man's life as a standard of value. And since man's mind is his basic means of survival, I hold that if man wants to live on earth and to live as a human being, he has to hold reason as an absolute by which I mean that he has to hold the reason as his only guide to action and that he must live by the independent judgment of his own mind, that his highest moral purpose is the achievement of his own happiness and that he must not force other people nor accept their right to force him, that each man must live as an end in himself and follow his own rational self-interest all right before we go on reminder please like the show we, we've got 163 live listeners right now uh, 30 likes that should be at least 100 i figure at least 100 of you actually like the show maybe there are like 60 of the matthews out there who hate it but but at least the people who are liking it you know i want to see i want to see a thumbs up there you go start liking it i want to see that go to 100 all it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing. Whether you're looking at this, uh, and and you know the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there. Help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share. And uh, you can support the show at yourunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, 
support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.